As archaeologists learn more about ancient empires, it's becoming clear that many civilizations were much more advanced than we had previously realized. So for today's video, I'm taking a look at 15 incredible examples of ancient engineering. Starting with number 15, the Theater of Marcellus, Italy. The Theater of Marcellus, which is in Rome in Italy, may not be the largest of structures built by the Roman Empire, but it definitely became one of the most influential. Commissioned by Julius Caesar and completed by Emperor Augustus in 13 BC, the theater was dedicated to Augustus's nephew Marcellus, and it was one of the earliest, most important permanent theater structures in Rome. It marked a transition from temporary wooden theaters to the grand stone monuments that would become synonymous with the empire. With a capacity to hold approximately 20,000 spectators, the theater was designed for performances of drama and music, and its design influenced the development of Roman theater architecture, including the iconic Colosseum. The structure's huge facade, featuring the Doric iconic Corinthian order stacked vertically, showcased the Roman architectural style of incorporating Greek architectural elements into Roman designs, and it was essentially a fusion of the two. Despite being built more than 2,000 years ago, the theater remains in remarkably good condition, further showing how well Roman architects designed and built structures. Over the centuries, the theater underwent various transformations, such as in the medieval period when it was repurposed into a fortress by the Fabi family and later converted into a residential complex in the Renaissance. Today, the theater remains an important historical landmark nestled in the center of modern Rome. And while not as popular as the more famous remains, it attracts visitors from far and wide nevertheless, offering a glimpse of Roman ingenuity and development at its best. Number 14. Megalithic Temples, Malta The megalithic temples of Malta are among the oldest freestanding structures in the world, predating even the pyramids of Egypt and Stonehenge in England. Constructed during the Neolithic period, which was between 56 to 4500 years ago, they're located on the islands of Malta and Gozo, with the most famous being Hagar Kim. Those who constructed the temples were far ahead of their time, considering the Neolithic builders only had stone tools available to them. The structures are made from large limestone blocks, sometimes weighing over 20 tons, and their layout typically follows a trefoil design, with the central corridor leading to several semicircular spaces. Now, this design suggests that the temples were places of worship, possibly dedicated to a fertility god, with a number of artifacts backing up this idea, such as figurines and statuettes that depict voluptuous figures and animals. These temples aren't just impressive because of their age and size, but also by their intricate decorations and architectural features. The Tarsian temples, for instance, are known for their detailed stone carvings, including domestic animals and spiral motifs that are believed to hold symbolic importance. Similarly, the Gaganchita temples in Gozo, the oldest of the temple complexes, are named after the giants of Maltese folklore, reflecting the sheer scale of their design. Temples are seen as so important that in 1980, UNESCO declared them to be a World Heritage Site. Initiatives have been undertaken to stabilize the buildings to prevent erosion and to manage the impact of tourism, ensuring that these Neolithic wonders will be preserved for generations to come. Number 13. Sanchi Stupa, India the Sanchi Stupa, which is located in the state of Madhya Pradesh in India, is an incredible insight into the architectural, religious, and cultural significance of Buddhism in ancient India. Dating back more than 2,300 years ago, it was commissioned by Emperor Ashoka, one of India's most renowned rulers. It's such an important Buddhist monument that it's now protected as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, both because of its religious importance and the impressive engineering behind it. The central structure is a large hemispherical dome, which symbolizes the mound of dirt used to cover the Buddha's remains. This dome, called the Anda, is surrounded by a flat circular terrace known as the Medhi, which provides a path for the ritual route that's walked by pilgrims. The stupa is surrounded by a railing, or vedika, which separates the sacred space from the secular world outside, and four ornately carved gateways, or toranas, positioned at the main points of the compass. They serve as entrances to the stupa. These gateways are decorated with scenes from the Buddha's life, Jataka tales, which are stories of the Buddha's previous births, and symbolic motifs, all showcasing an exquisite level of artistry and deep religious belief. It's known in particular for its sculptural decoration and the symbolic representation of the Buddha through emblems such as the wheel, the Bodhi tree, and the Buddha's footprints, as opposed to actual representations, all of which is iconography from the earliest phase of Buddhist art. 
Over the centuries, the entire complex expanded to include additional stupas, temples, and buildings, which show the evolving architectural styles and the continuing importance of this site in Buddhist worship and pilgrimage. The conservation and archaeological study of the site has therefore provided a critical insight into the religious, cultural, and social dynamics of ancient India, and to this day, it remains a place of pilgrimage for Buddhists from around the world. Number 12. Ephesus, Turkey Ephesus, which can be found on the west coast of modern-day Turkey near the present-day town of Selçuk, is an unusual site that's one of the most important Greek-Roman sites in the world. Founded in the 10th century BCE by Greek colonists, it became one of the 12 Greek city-states of the Ionian League, but would later come under control of various powers throughout history, including the Persians, Romans, and Byzantines, each leaving their own mark on it. The city was captured by the Roman Republic in 129 BCE. Within a few hundred years, it would become the capital of the province of Asia, and with a population nearing 250,000, it was easily one of the largest cities of the Roman Empire. The ruins of Ephesus, which have now been carefully excavated and partially restored, offer a glimpse into the city's rich past, with streets, temples, theaters, and libraries that show the city's former greatness. One of the most impressive structures is the Library of Celsus, which was built in the year 117 to serve as a mausoleum for Gaius Julius Celsus Polymenenus, the Roman governor of Asia Minor, and to store thousands of scrolls. The library's facade, which has now been reconstructed from thousands of fragments, is a great example of the skill of Roman engineers and the importance of ornamentation in their designs. Another important building was the Temple of Artemis, which was regarded as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Although now only a few columns remain, you get a sense from them how spectacular it was in its day. Ephesus also holds an important place in Christian history too, as it's believed to be the site of the Virgin Mary's last residence, preserved as a shrine. And it's mentioned in the New Testament as a community visited by St. Paul, who wrote his first letter to the Corinthians here. The Great Theater is capable of holding over 25,000 spectators, and it's where Paul famously preached against the worshippers of Artemis, leading to a riot by those whose livelihoods depended on the temple. With well-preserved ruins that are evidence of grand structures and huge historical importance for cultures around the Mediterranean, Ephesus was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2015, which hopefully means we'll learn even more about the place in the coming years. Number 11. Persepolis, Iran Persepolis is an ancient city that was in the Fars province of modern-day Iran, and it was the capital of the Achaemenid Empire, which flourished between 550 to 330 BCE. Founded by Darius the Great in around 518 BCE, the city was conceived not only as a ceremonial capital, but also as a showpiece of the empire's vast wealth, diverse cultures, and architectural abilities. It was strategically built at the foot of the Kum Iramat, which is translated to mean the Mountain of Mercy, and it was designed to be a spectacular showcase for the empire's New Year celebration. It features a massive terrace which was built with huge blocks of stone and accessed by the Grand Staircase, which then leads to the Gate of All Nations. This site includes a series of huge palaces such as the Apadana Palace and the Throne Hall, which were used for receptions and festivals, and are some of the finest you'll see from the ancient world. One of the most beautiful things you can see in what remains of Persepolis is the extensive use of carvings that adorn the staircases and walls of the palaces. These reliefs depict scenes of tribute bearers from the 23 subject nations of the empire, showing just how diverse it really was. The figures are represented with remarkable detail, showing different ethnicities, costumes, and gifts. Despite its importance, though, Persepolis met a tragic end when it was destroyed by Alexander the Great in 330 BCE, which was an act of revenge for the burning of the Acropolis during the Persian Wars. The ruins of Persepolis were eventually excavated in the 1930s, and then it was declared a World Heritage Site in 1979. Number 10. Lashan Giant Buddha, China the Lashan Giant Buddha is an enormous statue that was carved into the face of a cliff in the southern part of the Sichuan province in China during the Tang Dynasty. At a height of over 230 feet, or about 71 meters, it's the largest stone Buddha in the world and an amazing example of religious art in ancient China. The statue was carved into the rock face where the Minjiang, Dadu, and Qingyi rivers converge and it's believed that this position was chosen so the presence of the Buddha would calm the turbulent waters that troubled passing ships. Construction of it began in 713 AD under the guidance of a Chinese monk named Hai Tong. 
His hope was that the Buddha would protect the sailors from perilous waters, and despite encountering funding issues during its construction, it was eventually completed in the year 803, almost 90 years after work had begun. The statue, more specifically, is a depiction of Maitreya, a bodhisattva who was prophesied to become a Buddha and succeed the historical Buddha Siddhartha Gautama. Maitreya is shown seated, with his hands resting on his knees in a posture of meditation and serenity, and the carving is so large that more than a hundred people can sit between the feet of it at the same time. The engineering behind it is just as impressive as the artistry. To prevent water damage, for example, an ingenious drainage system was incorporated into the design, consisting of a hidden gutter and channel throughout the hair, collar, chest, and back of the figure, which divert rainwater and keep the inner parts dry. Unsurprisingly, the site has now become a major tourist attraction, but also an important site of pilgrimage for Buddhists around the world. Because of its importance and architectural accomplishment, it was recognized as a World Heritage Site in 1996. Number 9. The Tumulus of Bougon, France The Tumulus of Bougon, or the Necropolis of Bougon, is an impressive series of megalithic monuments that are located in the west of France, near the village of Bougon. Dating back to the Neolithic period, these ancient structures are among the oldest in Europe, with some estimates placing their construction around 6,800 years ago. The site is made up of several tumuli, which are essentially mounds of earth and stone that are built over graves. These tumuli vary in shape and size, indicating a complex and prolonged use of their site over centuries, with the largest being known as Tumulus A, which measures 138 feet or 42 meters in diameter. Their construction was highly sophisticated for prehistoric communities, and it shows the considerable effort and resources that they put into their funerary practices. It's likely, though, that they had a dual purpose, as the monuments are believed to have served not only as burial sites, but also as ceremonial centers, where rituals related to death, ancestry, and the cosmos might have taken place. The artifacts found within the tumuli, including pottery, tools, and ornaments, offer some clues about the daily life, social structure, and beliefs of the Neolithic people here. The excavation and study here have been ongoing since their discovery in 1840, and the site is now home to the Bougon Museum, which opened in 1993. This museum is dedicated to the preservation and interpretation of the site and its findings, and it offers visitors a comprehensive view of the necropolis, displaying artifacts that have been found on the site and providing insights into the methods used to explore and understand these ancient structures. Number 8. The Second Temple of Hera, Italy the Second Temple of Hera, which is sometimes also called the Temple of Neptune, is an impressive example of ancient Greek architecture and one of the best preserved Doric temples in the world. It's located in the archaeological site of Paestum, which is in the Campania region of southern Italy. These structures date back to more than 2,500 years ago. Constructed around 450 BCE, it's around 197 feet in length and about 79 feet wide, with a total of 36 massive Doric columns arranged along the perimeter. These columns, which still stand tall today, support the remnants of the higher parts of the building, which gives a good impression of what it would have looked like when it was first built. The temple was the second in the region to be dedicated to Hera, the queen of the Olympian gods and the goddess of marriage and childbirth, showing just how important the cult of Hera was at the time and the religious and cultural significance of the site within the Greek world. Archaeological evidence suggests that it was built on the site of an earlier sanctuary, which suggests the long-standing tradition of worship at this location, and the precise architectural details used in its construction, including the fluted columns that taper to meet the roof, are great examples of the technical abilities of Greek architecture. Despite its name, though, the Second Temple of Hera was for a long time mistakenly attributed to Neptune, the Roman god of the sea, due to a misidentification by early archaeologists, and this mistake is still often made to this day. Further study and analysis of the temple's inscriptions, though, along with the artifacts that have been found, show that it was in fact dedicated to Hera, with no mention of any other gods at all. Moving on to number 7, Bagan, Myanmar. Bagan, which is in the Mandalay region of Myanmar, is one of the most impressive architectural sites in the world that you probably haven't heard of. Spanning over 26 square miles of the plains of central Myanmar, the site is dotted with more than 2,000 Buddhist temples, stupas, and monasteries. Amazingly, though, this is just a fraction of what it was once like, as the landscape was originally home to more than 10,000 structures that were built between the 9th and 13th centuries during the height of the pagan kingdoms. The ancient city became the political, economic, and cultural focal point of the Pagan Empire, which unified the regions that would later become modern Myanmar. 
The rulers of Bagan were devout Buddhists, and their faith was reflected in the huge number of religious buildings they constructed. Each king sought to demonstrate his piety and secure his merit for future lives by building stupas and temples on a grander scale than those of his predecessors, and this resulted in an architectural legacy unlike anything else. The architects and engineers used a clever combination of brick and stucco, which gave the structural integrity that was needed, but allowed artisans to add intricate carvings. Among all of the buildings, it's the Andana Temple, completed in 1091, that is seen as being the finest example of Burmese temple design, and it's known for its gilded Sikhara, or tower, a series of exquisite terracotta tiles that depict scenes from the Jataka tales, and four standing Buddha statues facing each cardinal direction. Despite hundreds of years worth of natural disasters, invasions, and neglect, Bagan remains a place of spiritual significance and a major pilgrimage site for Buddhists, and many other buildings are still in use. One of the most popular ways to see the entire region is by hot air balloon, and some mornings you'll see hundreds of them calmly floating through the sky full of visitors wanting a bird's eye view. Number 6. Hampi, India Hampi is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that's in the southwestern state of Karnataka, and it's a vast landscape covered with more than 1,600 remains of temples, palaces, markets, streets, and other structures. These ruins, with the backdrop of boulder-strewn hills and the Tungbahadra River, are what remains of the capital of an ancient empire which flourished from the 14th to the 16th century. At its peak, Hampi was one of the largest and richest cities in the world, known for its advanced administration, trade, and love of art and architecture. The city was a melting pot of cultures and religions, attracting traders, travelers, and pilgrims from around the world. Among the countless structures, the Virupaksha Temple is particularly special, dedicated to Lord Shiva. It's the oldest and the principal temple in Hampi, and it's always full of worshippers and tourists. Perhaps the most interesting, though, is the Vitala Temple, which has an incredible stone chariot, but also musical pillars that emit musical notes when struck. There's also the Lotus Mahal, the Queen's Bath, and the Elephant Stables, all of which show Hampi's importance and diversity in different ways. One of the world's greatest cities, Hampi was besieged and destroyed by the Deccan Muslim Confederacy in 1565. Now, despite this, the ruins have preserved much of their original charm, which gives us a unique opportunity to glimpse what life was like during this empire. Exploring Hampi is like a walk through a huge open-air museum, where every path in turn leads to a fascinating story. Number 5. The Karnak Temple Complex, Egypt When you think of ancient Egypt, the first monuments that come to mind are probably the pyramids, but there's another series of buildings nearby that are in many ways far more interesting and impressive. Known as the Karnak Temple Complex, and located in Luxor, it covers an area of over 200 acres, and it's a memorial to the architectural, cultural, and religious achievements of the ancient Egyptians. The construction of the Karnak took more than 2,000 years, with each Egyptian ruler from the Middle Kingdom to the Ptolemaic period contributing to it, resulting in a series of temples, chapels, pylons, and other buildings from different time periods. At the center of Karnak is the Temple of Amun-Ra, one of the largest religious buildings ever constructed, covering over 60 acres. It's dedicated to the king of the gods, Amun-Ra. This temple was the centerpiece of Theban religious life and symbolized eternal power of the pharaohs and their gods. The entire site of Karnak was built in alignment with the winter solstice sunrise, and on this day each year the Temple of Amun-Ra is illuminated, further showing the ancient Egyptians' understanding of astronomy and its importance with their religious beliefs. Karnak held a place at the center of economic, political, and spiritual life in ancient Egypt, and as well as being a place of worship, it was a major administrative center for the priests who held considerable power and influence. The annual Opet Festival, a major religious celebration, originated from Karnak, during which statues of the Theban triad were padded along the avenue of the Sphinxes that connected Karnak to the Luxor Temple. Today, Karnak is, of course, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, attracting people from around the world. You can walk through the impressive number of temples and chapels, each with its own story to tell, and amazingly, there's still plenty more to uncover there, too. Number 4. Gobekli Tepe, Turkey Gobekli Tepe is in southeastern Turkey. It's been said to be one of the most significant archaeological discoveries of our time, forcing us to change previous ideas about the origins of civilization. Dating back to 12,000 years ago, it's older than Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids, making it the world's oldest known temple complex. 
discovered by German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt in the 1990s. Gobekli Tepe shows a surprising advanced level of construction and was used for spiritual or ritualistic purposes. The site's made up of several circular and oval-shaped structures, each featuring massive T-shaped limestone pillars that weigh several tons. Carvings include a variety of creatures such as lions, bulls, boars, foxes, gazelles, and snakes, some of which are thought to represent constellations or have symbolic meanings related to the spiritual beliefs or practices. The builders here were hunter-gatherers who hadn't yet begun agriculture, which overturns the long-held belief that the construction of monumental structures and development of complex societal structure only began with the development of farming. Instead, Gobekli Tepe suggests that the desire for communal religious expression and the creation of monuments may have been a catalyst for the development of agriculture, rather than the other way around. The purpose of this place remains a subject of debate, with theories ranging from it being a temple or sanctuary, a place of pilgrimage for nomadic groups, or a site for ritualistic ceremonies and feasts. The extreme effort required to construct these structures, quarrying, carving, transporting, and moving massive stone pillars, indicates a high degree of organization, suggesting that religious or spiritual beliefs played a central role in the lives of these early humans. Number 3. Sechen Archaeological Site, Peru The Sechen Archaeological Site, which is in the Casma Valley of Peru, is a site that was built by the pre-Columbian civilizations that thrived in the region long before the rise of the Inca Empire. Dating back to around 3,600 years ago, Sechen is one of the oldest known urban settlements in the Americas, and it's part of the Sechen Alto Complex, a series of archaeological sites that include Sechen Bajo and Takauchi Konkan. The most impressive thing about this place is the monumental stone architecture, particularly the Sechen Alto Temple, which is a large square stone structure with walls adorned with relief carvings. The iconography here suggests that Sechen was a center of both religious and military power, where ceremonies and perhaps sacrifices took place to establish the power of the elite members of society, or to appease their deities. This complex consists of a central plaza, residential areas, and ceremonial spaces, all organized with a clear sense of order and purpose. The presence of agricultural terraces in the surrounding landscape is evidence of an advanced knowledge of farming and irrigation, which would have been necessary to support such a dense population. The complexity of the site, combined with the apparent control over labor and resources required to build it, indicates that this place was home to a highly organized society with some archaeologists believing that Sechen was one of several regional centers of power in a network of complex societies that eventually gave rise to the Andean civilizations. The site, therefore, provides a vital link in understanding the development of Andean culture, and it predates the Moche and Nazca cultures, known for their artistic achievements. Today, it's an important heritage site in Peru and the study of ancient civilizations worldwide. The site's preservation and continued excavation have the potential to unlock further secrets about the prehistoric people of the Andes. Number 2. Borobudur, Indonesia Borobudur, which is a huge Buddhist monument in the Kedu Valley of the island of Java in Indonesia, was built during the 8th and 9th centuries under the Silendra dynasty. It's the world's largest Buddhist temple and a leading example of Indonesia's rich cultural heritage. Constructed from millions of blocks of volcanic stone, it's constructed as a stepped pyramid made up of six square platforms topped by three circular platforms with a central dome at its peak. The entire structure is decorated with over 2,600 relief panels and 500 Buddha statues, covering an area of about 27,000 square feet. The temple represents the Buddhist cosmology, which divides the universe into three realms, Kamadatu, which is the world of desires, Rubadatu, the world of forms, and Araputatu, the formless world. Visitors to Borobudur take on a symbolic pilgrimage as they rise up through the levels of the temple. The journey begins at the base, which is a realm of desire and delusion, where intricate carvings depict scenes of daily life as well as various sinful acts. Reaching higher levels, you leave the worldly life behind to reach the realm of forms, illustrated through galleries of narrative images. Ultimately, the pilgrim reaches the circular platforms representing the formless realm. Here, open-work stupas house statues of the Buddha in meditation, symbolizing detachment from the physical world. The crowning dome is surrounded by 72 bell-shaped stupas, each perforated with openings that house a statue of the Buddha. The temple's design integrates surrounding landscape and it aligns with the four points of the compass and the nearby sacred mountains, showing the harmonious union between man, nature, and the divine. 
Borobudur was hidden for centuries under layers of volcanic ash and jungle growth until it was rediscovered in the 19th century, and since then, it's undergone several restorations. Now drawing millions of people each year, Borobudur is now a focal point for the Buddhist learning and celebration, particularly during Vesak, the Buddhist birthday. Number 1. Tikal, Guatemala Tikal, which is in the dense forests of northern Guatemala, was once a major city-state that played a crucial role in the political, economic, and military dynamics of the region. It is among the most important of the classic period Maya cities that have so far been discovered, and it's thought to have been built around 1500 years ago. The city's architecture is a blend of majestic temples, palaces, public squares, and acropolises connected with a complex network of causeways. Its urban core covers an area of about six square miles, with a large region beyond this that suggests the existence of a vast metropolitan area that could have supported a large population. Central to the incredible skyline are its temple pyramids, reaching up above the rainforest canopy. The Temple of the Great Jaguar and the Temple of the Masks are alongside the Great Plaza. Beyond the central acropolis, a series of palatial buildings served as the residential and administrative area for Tikal's leading members, displaying both wealth and sophistication of Mayan society. At its height, Tikal was a focal point of Mayan culture, which was famed for its advances in mathematics, astronomies, and glyph writing. The Long Count Calendar, which was an advanced result of their knowledge of astronomy and mathematics, is recorded on various monuments throughout the city, which also feature a chronological record of Tikal's history. The natural setting of Tikal further helps to understand the Maya's relationship with their environment. Surrounded by a biodiverse tropical forest, the ancient Maya used ingenious agricultural techniques, such as raised fields and reservoirs, to sustain the city's population. The city planners also had a deep respect for the landscape, as shown by the integration of architecture with natural features like the hills and ridges. Excavations at Tikal, which began in the mid-20th century, continued to reveal the layers of complexity of the place, and despite the site's abandonment around the end of the 10th century, the causes of which remain a mystery, the ruins have retained their natural wonder. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you to our channel members.